Good morning, and welcome to the teacher's wake-up call. It's been a bit, I think, I last spoke with you guys, with you folks, with you people, with you viewers, casual or accidental. Some people end up like on this channel purely by accident, and I love it. I love it. And I appreciate also those who leave me a comment. I, I do try and like, and sometimes I do respond, but not all the time. So welcome back. I'm Madame La Prof, and today I'm going to talk about the blame game. <laughs> so, okay. So, so people are starting to point fingers right now um, within the uh, provincial government right now when it comes to the uh, negotiations, the ongoing negotiations with the unions. And uh, on yesterday afternoon, the uh, opposition, not leader, but the um, spokesperson for education of the opposition party for education, okay, um, expressed her opinions about the main negotiator um, in these, you know, in these ongoing negotiations, Sonia Lebel, and um, the spokesperson for the opposition party said that Sonia Lebel is no longer the person, the right person, the right woman for the job. And no, 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 the spokesperson is not a guy, so this is not a case of misogyny, okay? This is not a case. This is a case of uh, incompetency. So this is fun. This is fun. So then, um, a few hours later, uh, the uh, education minister, Bernard Rainville, said, no, 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 no. Uh, Sonia Lebel is uh, a fantastic negotiator and has signed four different contracts for $8 billion total. But when you look at her track record, over the last year, she has not come to any, any uh, agreement with any of the uh, 10 groups involved in these provincial negotiations. <laughs> so, so let's play the blame game here. Why, why, not why, but who should we blame for these problems? Who should we blame for these ongoing problems? Should we be blaming the education minister or the previous one? <sighs> okay. You know what? A lot of decisions have been made um, by uh, the previous education minister, the current education minister, but I don't think their decisions have put us in this situation. Can we blame the premier? Well, I don't want to say that he's the one who, who has a, a, a veto power over this. We're not in the States. But ultimately, if, if his team is towing the party line, do we point the finger at him? I think ultimately, what we should be doing is not blaming those who are currently in power. Although they're not doing a fantastic job <laughs> showing that they care. I think we have to blame something that predates them. Uh, I think we have to blame, to begin with, the, the perception that so many people, not just in the past but now, have about teachers. Um, this, this idea that although we spend three years, four years, university, four years, well, before me, like if we, if we want to talk about the past, it was a three-year bachelor's, now it's a four-year bachelor, okay? Um, and some people even have a master's, so, you know, after spending that much time in university, we are still viewed less than a professional. Um, other professionals in different fields will have a different recognition, 
a different appreciation. But just because we seem to have two months off in the summer and two weeks off at Christmas, uh, oh, we're, you know, we're spoiled. We're, we're demanding too much. And I would like to remind everyone who seems to have that perception, we do not get paid over the summer. We get a paycheck. But what happens is that our pay, our salary, gets, gets um, kind of like sp spread out, divided in a certain way so we can get a paycheck over the summer, but it's less than our regular paycheck during the school year. So it, 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 we're not getting paid. We're just getting a, a chunk of the salary that was, that was taken out during the school year, and, and then we're paid during the summer, but we're not paid. It's, we're not getting the same amounts that we were getting during the school year, okay? So it's less. Um, and before you think that, oh, you know, doctors don't take time off, psychologists don't take time off, they do, they do, they do. And, and we don't expect also those professionals to bring their work home, you know? Um, but if we don't correct essays you know, in a timely fashion, we're accused of, hey, um, what are you doing in your evenings? Like, why aren't you working? Why aren't you correcting? So, <laughs> there's, there's, there's kind of this, this, this perception that has been going on for decades, okay? That we are not the professionals that we're supposed to be. Because if that was the main point of view, the main, the main way of seeing teachers in this province, I don't think we would be having the issues that we have right now. I don't think we would have the problems that we have right now. Um, you know, if a doctor cannot take, and, and I could be wrong, I could be wrong, okay? So if someone is, has that information, please share it with me in comments respectfully, okay? But if a doctor cannot take more patients, they, they have to say like, no, I cannot take new patients, my docket is full. If we have a classroom with, uh, let's say, 33 students, and three new students show up during the school year and your classroom now is at 36, you do not have the right to say no as a teacher. You can't, you can't. So, so, and, and, and before, before people say like, hey, stop comparing teachers and doctors, they're not the same thing. You're right, it's not the same thing. But there should be that degree of, of autonomy. I don't know if I'm using the right word, but there's got to be a way to, to, to say no to certain things. And, and, and we, don't, we don't tolerate it for other professions. Hey, if a hairdresser cannot take an extra customer, that, that hairdresser says no. And we're like, oh, okay. And we go and find another hairdresser. So why is it okay? So that's, that's one example. That's one, maybe one and a half, because I talked about like, you know, correcting and everything. Okay. It's so easy to, to put the, put point, point like the collective finger at one person um, and accuse or, or, or like accuse the unions of not being flexible. The union has to set some structure, okay, to to protect to protect uh, everyone. And and I don't think it, you have to tell the unions like to be flexible. I, like I, I don't think it's the unions that have to be flex flexible. I think it's the government that has to be flexible. I think it's the government that has to, as as a friend of mine pointed out, maybe create. Um, um, you know, a 
not a program, but just like there's Health Quebec or Health Canada, there should be like, you know, Education Quebec. Not, not a ministry chapter, but like a group of professionals, a professional order, kind of, sort of, um, where, where they would work in tandem with the union. And, and that way, unions and teachers could have flexibility. But to point the finger and say, like, it's their fault, they need to be more flexible, it's, it's too easy. And that's not how we're going to get this, this conflict resolved. So, yeah. So we're starting next week on Friday. More strike days. Wish us luck. Because <sighs> I don't think this is going to end anytime soon. Have yourselves an awesome day.